Welcome to Medica Cardio Talk 18. In the next few minutes, we are going to discuss four possible uh, practice changing trials post ESC. I am Dr. Sanjeev Mukherjee and I have got my colleague Dr. Dilip Kumar to discuss these four trials. Uh, let's start with Panther trial. What do you think about Panther which has come out uh, after this ESC and making a lot of headlines? So hello everyone. Uh, thank you Sanjeev and I am very happy uh, you started with Panther trial. Actually this ESC was very successful and uh, there were uh, around 72 large trials were published um, and uh, presented there in uh, ESC 2022. And uh, when we talk about four trials, you chose uh, to start with Panther, I am very happy. So Panther can be a possible changing uh, because we have getting a lot of uh, evidence for last one decade rather that aspirin uh, is on its phase, you know, way out. And, the, and, and Panther trial is basically a meta-analysis. So it has shown that P2Y12, uh, P2Y12 uh, receptor inhibitors uh, can uh, or in this meta-analysis has outsmarted and uh, outperformed aspirin as secondary prevention strategy sure. as antiplatelets. But what do you think, uh, you know, in our particular practice, we very often see patients have got GI discomfort. You know, most of the time they say that we are not tolerating aspirin. So is this the only space where you think changing it to clopidogrel or do you think it will be, uh, you know, as a default strategy, we should go back to clopidogrel so alone? They studied uh, basically several large trials, which involved trials like uh, uh, Capri and the Glassy trial and so many trials, seven, seven large trials on antiplatelets. And then they studied uh, roughly around 24,000 patients and uh, they separated aspirin and P2Y12 uh, inhibitor uh, result after 557 days outcome and they found that patient on uh, aspirin bled little more they had more GI symptoms and GI bleeding and they had more uh, IC bleeding and uh, there was no difference in the uh, thrombotic events and uh, uh, you know myocardial uh, repeat revascularization or myocardial infarction or uh, thrombotic endpoints. Sure. So I think, uh, so as a default, you are going to use clopidogrel per se in a, in a post uh, PCI after a year follow up. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the way things are going, if we get one, other, one or more trials, very standardized, randomized controlled trials in secondary prevention, aspirin versus P2Y12, uh, then maybe uh, guidelines may consider it or uh, standing at the evidence, uh, the present scenario. Uh, it will not be uh, a kind of uh, coming as a surprise if uh, P2Y12 inhibitors are given a uh, you know status where uh, aspirin was there earlier in second sure. prevention. Sure. So let's move to the next uh, deliver trial. Again, uh, heart failure very important. So what do you think about deliver? Yeah, I think uh, the second trial again, we dis uh, which we are uh, discussing is very important. Deliver basically extended uh, the evidence which was there with uh, uh, gliflozins, uh, SL2 inhibitors, and. Uh, uh, it showed benefit and reduction in primary endpoints all across ejection fraction. So it was, you know, wonderful trial. In fact, 60% cutoff was also blurred. Before below 60%, more than 60%, uh, it didn't matter. I mean, you talking about LV functions. LV function and uh, patients who had a structural abnormality and raised probe VNP and uh, uh, HFPF, uh, the primary endpoints were, you know, reduced by 18% something very close to what we got in Emperor Preserve trial and, 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 and this has really been uh, you know a very remarkable and uh, you know we, we all are very delighted to have this trial. So Dapagliflozin is probably also now in league yeah. with EMPA as we uh, were talking about. Now what do you think uh, you know suppose a young heart failure comes so what will be your strategy continue with Dapa uh, for lifelong or is it just to tide over a heart failure crisis or what is your normal take on Once uh, we, we uh, all the trials which uh, we have seen so far, there are three three years, four years follow up trials. So uh, it, it will not be, you know, uh, uh, wise to stop these medicines because all these patients were on maintained ejection fraction but still symptomatic. Now they are recovering. So cardiovascular endpoints, reduction of future myocardial infarction, future rehospitalization becomes less. So it has to be continued Once, and, yeah. and, and delivered trial has one uh, you know difference these uh, patients were also in included in the trial which had ejection fraction coming up like they had ejection for 35 percent on medicine now they are 42 percent now they have enrolled these patients improved EF. so improved EF patients were also uh, there in uh, deliver so uh, I think your question was very right these patients should be on uh, these disease modifying now we can say disease modifying yes. drugs 
like uh, glyph uh, SGLT inhibitors and uh, RNA and uh, beta blockers, they have to be the, uh, on these continued, medicines. Right. Continued, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> keeping uh, track of time, I think we'll next uh, let's discuss something about Invictus. Now, what do you think uh, Invictus has changed as far as our thinking yeah. is concerned? In so, uh, Invictus uh, is a trial uh, from our uh, own socio-economic strata, uh, uh, you know, uh, nations, uh, South Asian nations, Latin American nations, some African nations. And uh, this trial also gave us a very, very good insight that uh, still time has not come to look only on NOACs in atrial fibrillation. Right. So this is, a, although, uh, this is although a different subset of patients, uh, rheumatic heart disease patients, but uh, it has to be uh, taken into cognizance that uh, mitral stenosis or mitral valve area less than 2 cm square were included in this. So some of the patients were also mild MS patients here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so altogether, uh, the patients who were on uh, rivaroxaban as compared to warfarin had more bleeding and 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 and, and, and the, their performance was uh, not adequate so still uh, uh, we can appreciate and say that uh, vitamin k antagonist has a definite role in this kind of population uh, sure yeah. so uh, warfarin or acetrome please continue in patients who mm -hmm. are on Rheumatic heart, uh, rheumatic heart disease, uh, moderate to severe mitral stenosis and, yes. and valve lesions, so probably we need to continue with the same, right? And one, one important was, uh, point was also there, the average patient's uh, TTR, time in therapeutic ratio was around 30-35 or maybe 40. But, they went, but they were, when they were included in the trial, they, during the trial their uh, TTR was something like 60-70% which is standard. Very good. So that may not be reflective of the day-to-day uh, -day situation, so that can be one flip side of this study that during randomized control trial we are looking at population which has really really well maintained TTRs which doesn't happen in the normal scenarios so this can be an outlier and we can think still differently but of course our practice may not change but that, but this is this has come really as a surprise, surprise. that how can a, mm -hmm. a rivaroxaban and the doses was uh, uh, which were used was 20 milligram of okay. rivaroxaban and 15 milligram in low GFR patients sure. less than 30 GFR patients sure. Sure. <coughs> So I think uh, let's now talk about Revive, which is making a lot yeah. of noise, so uh, uh, in, in especially in uh, heart failure, ischemic uh, heart failure. So yeah, this is this, is, this was a very uh, uh, demoralizing and depressing trial for us because we feel that every patient who is having a low ejection fraction and a multi-vessel disease, if we open the vessel either through surgery or angioplasty, the patient is going to have a better outcome, and ejection fraction will improve, and that was basically the idea behind the Revive trial. It was uh, not a small trial, but something like. Uh, uh, 700 800 patients were there and uh, patients were followed up for uh, 3.4 years and uh, these patients uh, surprisingly showed that in medical therapy the outcome was as good as uh, revascularization through angioplasty so it was kind of a stitched trial uh, kind of a, a same uh, trial design was there to evaluate the efficacy of multivessel disease angioplasty when uh, in uh, stitch less than 35 percent patients were taken for surgery Right. But here uh, you had LV dysfunction, <coughs> you had documented uh, perfusion scan showing uh, reversible ischemia. In spite of that, medical therapy arms and uh, intervention arm did the same. So what do you think probably is, is, is your thinking why it happened or what, what I, do you think it yeah, drawbacks yeah, yeah. to this trial? I still feel that uh, it, the, more studies are needed because in uh, revived trial, 75% of the patients were having only NYHA class 1 and 2. So there were no symptomatic, not symptomatic patients. They were doing well, keeping well patients. Number and and uh, uh, in uh, revive the patients, medical therapy was really improved. We had uh, acid inhibitors, we had uh, RNA, we had uh, beta blockers. Uh, known to us how much to titrate with MRAs. So medical therapy is a big, uh, you know, gainer in uh, all these uh, trials. And uh, we can't say that angioplasty has not performed. Maybe we can say that. The other arm, arm has uh, uh, really uh, therapy has uh, come down. a long way, so it, the gap has uh, narrowed. Yeah. Sure, so probably drug therapy uh, has improved and that probably would have caused the difference to narrow down is yes. what we think. And one more point was, uh, in stitch trial, initially uh, the medical therapy was better. At 10 years they got benefit in surgical arm. Yes. And uh, it's too premature to so th say that. Uh, you know, PCI group was yeah, uh, inferior, right. equal, not inferior. Or the mo uh, numerically, we had a better outcome. Yes. It was not st uh, significant, no yes. difference. Statistical significance was not. But 
maybe in long run you may never know because chances of repeat reverse polarization was more in medical arm and general symptoms uh, were more frequently there in uh, medical arm so it's not a kind of a, a trial which tells us not to intervene in this group of patients definitely one who is sick one who is symptomatic still deserve the treatment which we are doing sure. revive has no uh, maybe a uh, answer for that okay so i think uh, it was a great discussion and uh, it's time to summarize panther uh, trial did show that uh, p2 by 12 inhibitors like clopidogrel might replace aspirin over long term as a follow up the paclitaxel is more or less equivalent to empagliflozin in a delivered trial invictus shows that in rheumatic heart disease still vitamin k antagonists have got a very important role and in ischemic heart failure revive trial uh, will need some more time to be analyzed whether interventions are going to help or medical therapy has got an equivalent role so i think we'll end here today and we'll welcome your uh, inputs as far as our medica cardio talks are concerned i'll end from my and dr dilip side Thank you.